Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about machine learning and its data components. We are getting continued with our next segment 4.2 which is going to talk about the training, validation, and test data set in the ML workflow, which is kind of a force extension to the workflow we discussed in the last tutorial. To talk about the training, validation, and data sets uh, for the ML workflow, we'll be just getting understanding that what exactly are the right set of data which are required and how do we break them into different parts to distribute the amount of data set what you have prepared. So in our previous segment, we pretty much understood that preparing, preparing the data is not an easy job. And of course, it requires a lot of effort to come up with a very, very Con, you know, com completely required set of data for the ML models to be trained. Now, of course, the entire data can just be used for one purpose. So we will be looking forward how we decide and dis distribute the amount of data into different ratios to be used for different purposes. Now, logically, the three set of equivalent data are required to develop an ML model. And the three segments or three distributions are three different categories what we create is a training data set which is used for training the model and the second category or second equivalent uh, partition will be used uh, as a validation data set which is use, which is used for evaluating and subsequently tunneling the model and the last one is of course to test the model which is used for testing the tuned model also known as holdout data set now, if unlimited suitable data is available, the amount of data used in ML workflow for training, evaluation, and testing typically depends on the following factor. Number one, the algorithm used to train the model and the availability of resources such as RAM, disk space, computing power, network bandwidth, and the available time. So of course, uh, one side is limited set of data which we have with us and we look forward to break them into three different equivalent partitions so that we can use them. And second is when we talk about unlimited data, there are certain things where we can have any number of information available, any sort of, any count of training data available, and we can look forward to perform all necessary activities. Now this is where uh, the algorithm would be more important to be considered and few factors like the resources and the time required to train the model. Further to add, in practice, due to the challenge of acquiring sufficient suitable data, the training and validation data sets are often derived from a single combined data set. The test data set is kept, kept separate and is not used during the training at all. Now, of course, we do know the challenges of getting the appropriate data set which is required to train the ML model. So the lack of information would result into a limited set of data. And this limited data cannot be just occupied or utilized for only training the ML model. So we have to break this into equivalence partitions to make sure that some of the data is reserved for performing the required testing as well. This is to ensure the developed model is not influenced by the test data and so that test results give a true re reflection of the model's quality. So we won't be anyhow using the test data which is being identified separately for testing, uh, will be kept away from the ML model in any kind of manner so that it can only be used during the testing of the ML model so that the precise results and a very, very, uh, you know, precise testing can be performed to see how exactly the system reacts to these sort of input data. There is no optimal ratio for splitting the combined data set into the three individual data sets, but the typical ratios which may be used as a guideline range from 60, 20, 20, or 80, 10, 10, which is in the ratio of training, validation, and test. So pretty much telling you that there are no some standard rules and regulation that how can you distribute your data among to be used for training, validation, and test. But in a very general guideline, we say that the majority of the data will be utilized for training purpose and equal ratio of validation and test data will be reserved. But it can be in 60, 20, 20, which is like 60 is to 20 is to 20, or it could be even 80 is to 10 is to 10 because the more you train the ML model, 
the better the outputs will be. So of course you can increase the value towards training data set, but keep it restricted or limited towards the validation and test. Because even if I just try with 10 important or unique data set to test it, and it gives me a precise output, it's absolutely fine. And certainly uh, the more you train the system, the better or you know, sophisticated will be the output of it. Splitting the data into these data set, it is often done randomly unless the data set is small or if there is a risk of resultant data set not being representative of the expected operational data. So of course the uh, distribution does not happen in a fashion where we can say that these kind of information to be kept for training or these kind of information to be kept for testing. We just randomly pick up some you know, 80% of test data or data set to be used for training and the rest to be used for validation and test. So there are no so, such hard and fast rules defined as such that how exactly we distribute these ratios. If limited data is available, then splitting the available data into three data sets may result in insufficient data being available for effective training. Of course, now we have handful data available with you that becomes very tricky to understand that how much data to be secured for training the model because that may lack the learnability of the ML model. Now to overcome this issue, the training and validation data sets may be combined, keeping the test data set separate and then used to create multiple split combinations of this data set. For example, 80% of training and 20% of validation. Data is then randomly assigned to the training and validation data sets. Training, validation, and tuning are performed using these multiple split combination to create multiple tuned models. And then overall model performance may be calculated as the average across all runs. So only solution what we foresee here is when you have a very limited and handful set of information available with you, you may not be able to utilize this completely for the training or you may not go ahead and reserve the ratio for testing and validation separately. So the only recommendation at this point of time what we have is to be breaking this into two equivalent classes where majority of the share would be used for training and a limited share will be given to testing and further that majority share of the training will be broken down to be used for training as well as validation which is of course going to be randomly again there are no certain sequences and hard and fast rules that how exactly these values to be utilized for training the model or at the same time for validating the model. So I think that is all we wanted to convey you from this small topic of training validation and test data sets for ML workflow. And this is really challenging at this point of time that you have the right set of data to be used for training the ML model. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.